In this video, we talk about the way that we set up the plumbing in our shipping container cabin on DH Prepping. This is Desert Homestead Prepping. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. All right, guys, welcome back. Um, now we're going to go over the plumbing and, uh, and how we went about doing the plumbing. So when it comes to what we needed to do for the plumbing out here, it, it still goes right in line with not really having much money to spend. So with the plumbing, it is, it is the same as the electrical. The plumbing actually goes up in these in these corrugations and goes through the ceiling and uh and drops down into the bathroom area and into the sink area i'll kind of pan over and you'll see this is you know this isn't all professional and great like i said it's a you know it's cabin comfortable cabin that we built on a budget so yeah we got a 55 gallon um food grade water barrel and that's our water supply and it actually lasts quite a while so we'll pan over and and just kind of take a look at, at what we got going on here we got the the water barrel here and and back behind it is the water pump the water pump actually branches off and uh and goes into the water heater and then down behind the stove and it runs to the sink and there's a t that actually runs it up in one of these corrugations and through the ceiling off to the other side to the bathroom that works out pretty well for us uh, right here is just the switch for the for the water pump so that supplies all the water right there goes through the water heater you come over here and this is how we have set up the bathroom the water actually comes through the ceiling drops down right in here and branches off and comes off to the to the sink and then to the bathtub you know you you flip on the hot water and this water heater just it just lights right up and it instantly starts heating that water up i think we have it set to 140 degrees and and that water gets gets nice and hot um in fact it's it's way too hot you have to have to put a little bit of cold water on to make it comfortable so after that the water heater um, it just shuts the flame off as soon as the water stops running and uh, it's that simple and so the this water heater um i'm not a uh, you know endorsing camp lux but uh it is a very nice one i've looked at different water heaters uh different options i saw some cheaper ones that you know were adapted just for camping and stuff like that i i wanted something that was much more reliable like a residential one that i could mount and and this one was a little more expensive um this was about 350 dollars but i i felt like it was probably important to spend a little bit more on this you know, to know that it wasn't going to give out on us a year down the road and so this is this is pretty simple um it just it just has right here the propane um the hose for the propane just kind of drops down below there's a hole that i've drilled through the wall and that goes right out to the propane tanks and this exhaust 
it doesn't really put out much heat. So, um, but I still had to make sure that I cut a hole around, you know, this wood paneling to make sure it didn't get too hot. This is a pretty cool unit. Very happy with it. Now, when it comes to the drain, I had thought about, you know, septic systems. Um, if I if I paid somebody to come put one in here, it was going to be, you know, several thousand dollars. If I tried to make one myself, it would probably work out okay. But then I still run the risk of of violating, you know, the local codes and, uh, you know. On top of that, what happens if it fails and I put all this money into it and then it just becomes this sunken in hole in the ground. So we decided the best option for us was to go with a composting toilet. Um, there's many benefits to a composting toilet. I've seen many people on different homesteads just just talk wonderfully about composting toilets, about how it doesn't stink very convenient. They are actually able to reuse that waste later on for the garden, for their trees, for their flowers. So it, it makes sense to do that. And it's, it's very inexpensive. So when it comes to the rest of the waste, which is, you know, dishwater or bath water, well, that's real easy because that's considered gray water. And you can just run a hose off to your garden or any place where you would like the, the water to run off. That's what we decided to do. All right, so that is the drain right there for the kitchen sink. It's that simple. And uh, you know, there's our propane tanks. We got one propane tank set up for the water heater and another one set up for the stove. And it's just as simple as running that hose off out into the distance and uh, and making sure that it's going downhill in the winter so that it doesn't freeze. And for the bathtub in the bathroom, we'll swing around the other side. Here's the drain right here for the bathtub and the sink. So they're connected inside in the wall. And of course it has to be down much lower because you know the bathtub is is just barely off of the floor. And this is this has worked out well. We just hook a hose up to it. So when we're not here, we'll we'll put this cap over the top of this to make sure that no mice or anything can can climb up inside the drain. But yeah, it's it's just that simple. The hose just just runs right off out there. And that's where we drain off our our sink and bath water. While we're out here, um, this is the the exhaust pipe that comes off of that water heater, and uh, you know it doesn't really put off too much heat. But yeah, that's how it's set up. All right, so that wraps it up for the plumbing. All right, you guys take care. Thanks.